Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. So for the final reverse the verse of the year, they had an in-depth look at pretty much all the ships that are on our minds, um, that are still in development, that are, may not be in development, basically just answering all the questions that we might have. Now the first thing they pointed out was the difference between a rework and improvements. So what is the difference between either of them? A rework is where they throw away pretty much everything and rebuild everything from the beginning. Improvements are more focused on one area, like for example the cockpit interior, adding another room, adding a component area, that sort of thing. With that said, they are currently adding component hatches to pretty much all the ships that are in game now, making sure that they have a place to physically store the components on every ship so that you can access them and change them and fix them and whatnot. In some cases, they will say that there are no plans to address certain ships or ship features at that moment, but this doesn't mean that particular ships are never going to get reworked. It just means that in the near future, the attention is elsewhere. Now, talking about ship armor, they do have ship armor in-game at the moment, but it's not really as it should be. It is just a flat per damage type stat multiplier. They do want a physically based damage system, which should be a lot more systemic based on the geometry of the ship and eventually have visual changes as well. Now talking about ship modularity, this is from changing things like components or weapons to modules for the Endeavor, the Caterpillar, the Retaliator or the Vanguard internal pods. These are all just practically items which, like a component, can be swapped in and out. They are also physical, so they will take up space in your home base or your hangar. For example, the Endeavour module would be sitting in a warehouse alongside like ships, and then you can pick them and choose them as you need them. Obviously, you won't be able to pick them up physically. But when it comes to battlefield upgrade kits like with the Vanguard, this is no longer a thing, but you will still get the same content like the pods, the external items, the paint jobs, they will just be individual items rather than changing them as a full kit. You can change them whichever one that you want to pick and choose, which I feel is actually better. Uh, talking of the Vanguard, so we'll, we'll start with that one. Just a few little tweaks. They're redoing the central pod room to make better use of it, sorting out the, the one first and then changing the other variants afterwards. From there, they're adjusting the turrets, then the next section and the rear to make places for the components. Now the centre of the Vanguard will get a bit wider, so expect a slight exterior increase. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Uh, changes to the base Vanguard. We saw some pictures. The first one's looking towards the cockpit. It has gotten a little wider, making better use of the space, and the turret isn't going to get in the way anymore. The bathroom is less big as well, because it was a bit huge. And there's going to be lockers for storage for your items when it comes to the physicalised inventories. They're also doing that for a lot of ships, adding lockers and places to store your weapons or your clothing because you need a place to store them if you cannot carry them on yourself all the time. We also saw a view to the rear. You can see it's got a double door there now, so it's much larger than before. There's a food kitchen area and the engineer station there on the left. The cockpit itself is unchanged, but the neck now has component hatches. You can see this GIF which shows the components coming out there. Now, when it comes to sizes and actually being able to interact with them, sizes 0 to 1 of components will be able to be picked up and moved around. 2 to 3 will be too big to be picked up by hand and may need a repair station or potentially a tractor beam if you want to do it physically. And then 4, size 4 and up, uh, they're pretty much fixed to the ship and they need to go to, or you'll need to go to a specific location to get them repaired. There's a little floor component there on the Vanguard as well, which is quite cool. Uh, you need to be able to access these components regardless of whether you can pick them or take them out or not because they have subcomponents and they can be changed and fixed and repaired and swapped out. Uh, but once the Warden improvements are done, they will transition over to the other variants. The Harbinger is getting more torpedoes. The Sentinel is getting less antennas on the outside. But the plan is to do something externally for it, but just not like the concept. Now, John Crew mentioned something in regards to racing ships and how, you know, some of them are classed as racers, some of them are sort of classed as interceptors, but yet there's no distinction between them. Now, he did say he wants racing ships to be specific racing ships, no weapons, which, you know, makes sense, and then interceptors having the weapons and not being on the racing focus. This is something he wants. It's not, in, it's not in the plans, but I would hope to think that his weight at CIG would allow him to do that, but we'll have to wait and see. No, as I say, nothing is confirmed there. 
Now, someone asked regarding the visibility of the Freelancer, there is nothing planned to change the cockpit. Components will be behind the dashboard, which is why it's so long. There's also no plans for a rework of the Retaliator at this time. They do know that the layout makes no sense, but they can't do much with it unless they change the ship completely. So they may address it later on, but at the moment there are no uh, plans to do so. Now on to the Redeemer. This was the winner of the next great starship. If you're an old Star Citizen backer, you'll know about this. Uh, it was very heavily used in Squadron 42 at one point, but with the ship pipeline progressing more and more, problems began to arise. They realised it needs a complete redo uh, to get the current to get it to the current ship standards. The Valkyrie pretty much took its place in Squadron 42 as it needed more than six drop seats. The Redeemer is likely to become a proper gunship, kind of like an AC-130, but not to that size, uh, but a similar role of. Also, the Redeemer manufacturer may have to change. This will depend on whether they change the whole aesthetic or not. I would love to know what your thoughts are on this. I would see it cool as maybe a Drake ship, but uh, we'll have to wait and see what changes. They want to keep the same style as much as possible, though. So, the Reliant. Now, the changes to the Reliant are just the external loadout and skin changes. Uh, internally, the rear section is getting a little tweak to allow players to stand up comfortably and fit in all the gear uh, in the other variants. The ability to switch between vertical and horizontal flight should hopefully come with 3.5. They did say that Dave Colson, who is the guy currently working on the physics and the new flight model, he's working on the first version of the vehicle state machine, which allows you to decouple vehicle animation state. So your VTOL thrust is uh, independently changing, your wings folding up and down independently. Basically modes without switching between landing and flight mode. It may not be every ship for 3.5 all at once, but they, it is the beginning of this, so certain ships will be affected. There's nothing saying about gameplay coming with the other variants to the Reliance of the Mako. You won't be able to record, and it's unlikely it'll just be the actual ships themselves rather than the gameplay. Now, on to the Hull series. The Hull Sea was almost complete, then it disappeared. Basically, art-wise, it was about 80% done. It still needs its level of details, it's contraction and expansion art as well. They don't know how that will work yet. It's got no landing gear yet either. They need more code tasks before they can bring it in as it just will not be functional yet and it can't land so there's no real need to it. They do need also the vehicle state system uh, to be able to change between landing and open. Performance wise as well, it's got a huge amount of cargo space which is not optimized yet. We only have the individual boxes and if they were just to lob a load of them on, it wouldn't be optimized. They need some form of supersized cargo to fill that space. The localized physics grids for the front middle section and the back as well need to be sorted so that you can transition between them all quite comfortably. So they know what it needs, they just have no time to get to it and with working on object container streaming, that was prioritized over other areas of the development that the whole sea is waiting for. They also need docking as well. Um, the first type of docking we will get is ship to station docking. Then it's ship to ship docking, which will allow for Constellation and Merlin and the Caterpillar module detaching as well. So there's a little, well, there's a lot of work left for the whole sea, so don't expect it anytime soon. Uh, for the Polaris, those of you waiting on the Polaris, it is not in active development. The RSI style guide, however, is quite set with the Constellation and the Bengal carrier. The Polaris will fit somewhere between those two, which will help streamline the Polaris when the time comes to build it, but it's not in the near-term schedule. For the Idris, they are about three quarters of the way through this on the ship pipeline. Final art is what the stage is in, but that just means that the model is done, but the in-game setup is not done yet. So again, level of details, damage states, bug testing, visual effects, that sort of thing. It still requires a lot of work. Also, the Idris missile room still needs doing. Uh, and they want to really save the Idris for Squadron 42. Having that experience, because it's a large part of the Squadron 42 story, learning the ship and its crew is all part of the charm of Squadron 42. And if you were to play with the Idris in the Persistent Universe and then get to know the ship before Squadron 42, they feel it would ruin the experience and the charm of that whole experience. And I must say, I agree. I would love to have had it in the PU now and been playing with it. But firstly, we only have 50 players on our server, so it, you won't be able to man, them, man it properly. But also, I do want that special moment of getting on board in uh, Squadron 42. I just feel that would be phenomenal. Anyway, on to the, the Drake Vulture. This is your solo salvaging ship. 
they are trying to tie the Vulture in with the salvage gameplay. It's a smaller ship, so it would be easier to get it going, but the Reclaimer is there, so they will likely add the base salvage implementation with the Reclaimer. Uh, but if the Vulture is ready with salvage, then they may add it to that as well. It is higher up on the list for when it comes out, um, so it's not coming super fast, but I'm, I've, I own the Vulture, and I'm looking forward to using that. Anyway, the Genesis Starliner. They do have a plan to tackle the Crusader ships one after the other. They're going to start with the Star Runner, then they're going to go into the Star Lifter, and then finish up with the Star Liner, so it's not likely to be next year. For the Nova Tank, or Tonk, it is on the schedule. This can be completed by one person, and it shouldn't take too much time. So once they get on with that, expect it in a few weeks. It is sealed on the inside, so it does have its own life support. Someone asked if they could use it in space. It is not designed to be worked in space, so there's no airlock. So if you do open it up, it will vent everything. So potentially you could drive it around on a landing pad on, say, Port Olisar, but ultimately it's meant for the ground. Now the Endeavour, will this still be a modular ship, someone asked? And they say, yes, they're not getting rid of that. It has the detachable front section. That's all staying the same. Nothing has progressed since the pledge time, unfortunately. And they still don't know what ships will fit in its little hangar. So with the Cutlass, it was supposed to be able to hold two Cutlass. With the Cutlass increasing in size, it may only be one. Hopefully something like an Apollo would fit. That would be nice. Uh, but they will know when they build it. Uh, the same goes for the Caterpillar. They still have the idea of having the modules. Nothing in the schedule to get them in the works yet, though. But that would be very cool. For the Lynx and the Origin Rover, that should be in production next year. The Lynx is the luxury version of the Ursa Rover. And the Origin Rover is the Origin's luxury version of the Ursa as well. Or the, the Lynx. Uh, but that should be in production next year, which is good. The Banu Merchantman is again in production next year after the Karak is done. They've got five people working on the Karak, uh, which is obviously going to hopefully go quite quickly. It may The Banu Merchantman may not release next year, but work will begin on it. Now, someone asked regarding the Phoenix sensor dampening cargo bay. I think they said that there was a lot of crossed wires, but it was never supposed to be in. But because they said it would, what they're going to do instead is the, the Constellation Phoenix will have a shielded cargo bay which interferes with scanners, meaning it needs more effort to scan it properly. The Constellation Taurus will have a shielded hidden cargo bay, which means that the AI or the NPC may not look there if you are smuggling and they may not know about it, but players obviously will. If, you, if they board you, they'll, they'll likely find it. So we saw some images of the 890 jump. We saw the lower deck with a lift to the bar. Behind the door is the med bay. We saw the lower corridors, the engineering section corridors, the external shots we got to see the back engines it's got a 25 meter swimming pool and a steam room the atrium area and entrance which is probably my favorite bit looks amazing with that open top or glass roof which will be just amazing walking around there we've got engineering and the cargo bay there the crew quarters has a shared bathroom a crew mess and a little relaxation area and beds it's got a food station it is looking very very nice and it is now back in production now it can hold two 85x, but it only comes with one. The cargo bay has a lot of space in it as well and can hold a single ground vehicle, but that would obviously take up the cargo bay and it doesn't come with one. Now finally, we're gonna finish up with uh, the Karak. Now we saw a video a couple of weeks ago. We got to see some images as well. It did go up to 170 meters, but they felt it was too big. So they reduced it, especially for a five or a six person ship. Plus. With having it 125 meters now, it can now land in many more locations, which is quite important. With all the interior figured out, most of the rooms got shortened and they removed many of the corridors. So the rooms are all there, but it's just a little smaller. It still has the three modular pods. The landing gear has changed, which does look a little funny in my opinion. It looks kind of like a honey badger, but the old landing gear was too high in performance costs. So it now sits lower to the ground, which does make it a little more stable, they say. The side turrets are still there as well, so that's not gone. The bridge has also changed slightly from the concept. I preferred the concept image from the, the new one. There's no longer a charting table. Instead, they are using the holosphere, which again, I would prefer the charting table, but it's not a game breaker. The seats do still hang from the roof. The armoured shutters are still in the works because of some tech issues at the moment, so they're still looking into that. So you've got living quarters and a break room with a pool table divided by a central corridor with a mess hall as well on one side. 
Upstairs is the drone room next to the bridge. You've got a full med bay, which looks like it's got one of the higher tier med uh, beds, which allows probably spawning. We'll see. They didn't specify what bed it was. Uh, it's also got a front and a rear ramp, so that's quite handy. The Pisces, which is its little snub fighter, will begin work next year. The Merlin is what we saw in there. That isn't what comes with it. It's a different ship, but it was a similar size, so they used that. Anyway, guys, that was the ship shape for this year. Now, there's a lot of good stuff coming out next year. There's a lot of stuff that isn't coming out next year, which is a shame. Do let me know your thoughts. What are you most excited for? What are you disappointed about? Personally, I am very excited for a lot more industrial ships. I don't want any more fighters. I want these industrial things. Ground ships would be nice as well, or ground vehicles, sorry. Even the Nova Tank. I would love to get the Nova Tank and see how that handles. But there you have it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and tick up that little notification bell so that you get notified when my videos go live. Also, follow me over on twitch.tv forward slash supermacbrothersryan. We play the game on a regular basis four or five times a week, and you guys can jump in and play with me. And as we get more of the game, we'll start doing it a lot more as well. Big shout out to all my patrons and my sponsors. You guys are awesome. If you do want to help support my channel even further, it is much, much appreciated. So do follow the link in the description below. Thank you again for watching, and I shall see you next time.